Welcome to uh, this short lecture series on net zero and uh, welcome to this short introduction to that uh, to these lectures. So net zero is the current vogue. Everyone's talking about net zero, governments are falling over each other to commit to it and all in the belief that if you uh, commit to net zero by 2050 that somehow this means that you will uh, stop making any further contribution to global warming. That indeed is exactly what the chairman of the Climate Change Committee claimed to be the case. It's just wrong. Uh, you don't stop contributing to global warming if you stop producing carbon emissions at home. It helps, but of course you do a lot of importing too. And that importing, particularly for a country like Britain, which is small and open, uh, comes from around the world, and a lot of that steel, aluminium, petrochemicals, fertilizers, even cement, is made in incredibly carbon intensive ways. So the first thing that I want to get sorted out in this series is what's the question? And in particular, what is the question to which net zero is supposed to be the answer? And there are kind of three versions that I'll be working my way through. First of all, there's the one that the Climate Change Committee and now the UK government has legislated into, uh, into the Climate Change Act framework, which is that it's net territorial production. So it's emissions within the territorial area of the country. That's version one. Version two is the same as version one with a few tweaks to protect those industries which may be exposed to international competition and therefore import substitution with carbon intensive uh, uh, alternatives. And then the third one, and the only genuine one under which unilateralism stands up, is carbon consumption. That's meaning that what we consume, wherever it comes from, is net zero. So this all leads into the rather odd idea that a global problem like climate change, where it doesn't matter where emissions take place, can be solved by unilateral action. That somehow a small country like Britain, which contributes about 1% of emissions globally, can somehow help to solve the problem by adopting net zero uh, production at home. Now, I don't think anyone believes that climate change will be solved in Britain and probably not in Europe. Neither are significant enough in terms of the difference they could make. Climate change is not only global, but really heavily concentrated in uh, three parts of the world, China, India, and Africa. And here, emissions are growing extremely fast, and uh, uh, it's here that the battle for climate change will won or lost. So what I want to do in these lectures is take us through uh, how bad the situation is and why for the last 30 years, despite lots of efforts, we have made no progress at all in cutting global emissions and global concentrations of carbon, whatever people might think and whatever the, uh, the, 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 the happy news uh, tries to project, we haven't made progress. We have to understand why. Then I want to turn to what would have to happen for us to achieve net zero in the energy sector. That's lecture two. And then I'm going to turn to the other two really big areas of concern, transport and agriculture. And I want to bring this all together in the fifth lecture and talk about how this relates to overall environmental uh, policies and how net zero carbon fits with trying to do something about the great extinction wave in biodiversity and the possible collapse of a number of our uh, international globally important uh, ecosystems and environmental assets. So that's what I intend to do to paint a picture of what the situation is now and what we could do about it so that we could genuinely say that we at least in Britain are actually going to make no further contribution to climate change as opposed to the fiction which too many people have swallowed 
that somehow by just ending carbon production and carbon emissions domestically in our own territory, that somehow this is going to do much about climate change. Thank you.